Ford listened to its customers and created an advanced electric version of the Ford Bronco Sport. <laughs> no, silly. They didn't listen to you. They listened to consumers in China, where over half of the new vehicles sold are new energy vehicles, full battery electrics or plug-in hybrids and e-revs. Let's take a look at what we know of this adventurous EV. And they did more than just electrify the Bronco Sport. It's totally different, re-engineered to be bigger, electric, and more high-tech. Let's take a look. Before we hop on this horse, let's take a minute to understand Ford in China. Global brands will always have different lineups across the markets globally, and Ford is no exception. In Europe, they offer four all-electric passenger vehicles. The affordable Puma Gen E, the Capri and Explorer are both based on Volkswagen's MEB platform, and you can buy an imported Mach-E. Ford Europe offers BEVs and PEVs for its commercial vehicles, and in Norway, you can get an F-150 Lightning. In China, whose new market is larger than Europe and America combined, yes, you heard that right, China's new car market is really that massive. Over there, Ford, though, has been struggling. I mentioned in the intro that sales of new energy vehicles are more than half of the new vehicle market. So if you only make regular combustion engine vehicles and some mild hybrids without a plug, you're missing out on a lot of sales. That's Ford's problem, or I should say Chang'an Ford's problem. That's their main joint venture in China. Their vans are not plug-ins. Pickups are not huge sellers over there, but you can get the Ranger as a PHEV. That's not available yet in the US. It's built by Jiangling Ford, which is a different joint venture. The Mustang is all imported, all gas, no regen brakes. The Mondeo is a China-only design offered in gas and mild hybrid. The Mach-E is really their only battery EV. They're assembled in China, but have never been competitive against all the other advanced BEVs available in that market. The Mach-E is one of the best-selling BEVs in America, and I really like mine. And yet, in Europe, it's an also-ran, and in China, it's totally uncompetitive. The U.S. is already the minor league when it comes to EV technology, and pretty soon it could become the beer league. SUVs are core to Ford's lineup in China. There are several new names, Equity, Edge, Elantra, Equator. Ford names all of its SUVs with an E. The smaller Edge is the Escape platform that we know globally, and the Explorer is the same version that's sold in the US, but both of those SUVs are locally assembled in China. The word Bronco gets translated into Mustang by Google Translate. I guess there's not a clear translation differentiation between those two horse terms. That gets imported, as does a handful of F-150 Raptors. Again, all gas, no regen brakes. Aside from two plug-in hybrid offerings, not a lot of new energy vehicles. And that's their problem. Chang'an Ford needs more vehicles with a plug. They're seen as being more advanced, and they have tax and incentive benefits that make them increasingly desirable to customers. Well, hold on, because there's a new Mustang in town. <sighs> Again, translation issue. It's a Bronco. The Bronco New Energy for China. It will be assembled in China by Jiangling Motors, or JMC. That's Ford's other partner who assembles the Ranger. It may look like a Bronco Sport that we have in North America. That vehicle is built in Mexico and powered by a three-cylinder or four-cylinder gas engine. But this is a completely different breed. Details have been filed with China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, a required first step. So Ford decided to pair that release with a press release. It looks like the Bronco Sport, but it's way bigger width, length, wheelbase. In fact, it's about Rivian R1S size. It's difficult to know if they include the rear-mounted spare tire in the overall length measurement. Sometimes car companies do, sometimes they leave it out. It actually could be large enough to package a third row, but there's no confirmation of that, and it's hard to see through the window. So we'll just assume that it's a two-row vehicle for now. The Bronco New Energy offers two different powertrains. The BEV makes 271 horsepower, 
more on that later, and goes 404 miles on China's CLTC test with energy coming from a 105 kilowatt hour battery. Make that a BYD battery. It's their LFP blade batteries. Keep in mind that CLTC test results are much higher than EPA test results, so this is roughly a 300-mile EPA vehicle. That's cool. The other powertrain is being called an EREV, or Extended Range EV, the difference between a traditional PHEV, or Parallel Plug-in, and an EREV, or Series Plug-in, is outlined in this diagram, but sometimes an E-Rev can allow the gas engine to drive the wheels under certain circumstances, which would make it a parallel system. Yeah, I'll go with the reports that say that this is an E-Rev. So that means it will drive and accelerate like a battery electric vehicle, smooth and quick, and the gas engine just replenishes the battery. That engine is a 1.5 liter four cylinder. It recharges a 44 kilowatt hour BYD battery pack for 137 miles of electric range on the CLTC. Power delivery is 241 horsepower. Again, more on that later. Combined battery and gas range is 758 miles. The 1.5 liter is likely an engine made by JAC. That's a turbocharged engine and it uses the Atkins cycle for exceptional efficiency. The documents say the E-Rev weighs about 5,500 pounds. The BEV with its larger battery is 5,800 pounds. That's more than a gas SUV, but it's actually lighter than the Rivian R1S, even though the Bronco New Energy uses heavier LFP batteries from BYD. However, that power output they stated seems awfully anemic. We don't know for sure if this is a dual motor four wheel drive system. I mean, they wouldn't sell a Bronco with beefy tires as a single motor, would they? It doesn't add up to me. We'll have to wait for more details once it gets closer to launch. Given its off-road aesthetics, I would expect more power and four-wheel drive. Make it so. On the outside, it looks like a Bronco Sport, but it is totally different. Door handles are flush for, I don't know, I guess better aero, sure. A BEV or EREV is more efficient, requiring less airflow into the front. Thus, it has a sportier, more modern grille. Honestly, I think the Bronco Sport in the US needs a mid-cycle refresh. I never liked the look of the grille on that vehicle. I mentioned earlier that the spare tire is mounted on the rear, like the future Scout Traveler does. That SUV is a little larger, but it too plans to offer a BEV and EREV powertrain like the Bronco New Energy. It has over 30 high precision sensors and cameras, and that bump on the top of the windshield means it has a LiDAR sensor. This SUV may like to go off-road, but on-road it will offer advanced intelligent driving from its suite of sensors. No interior shots yet, but Ford did say the intelligent interior would offer an off-road book function that integrates more than 20 suggested road trips. Owners can easily plan routes, record scenery, and enjoy sharing their journey through the smart cockpit. Again, more details to come. The Ford Bronco New Energy will go on sale in China late this year. No word on pricing, no word on whether Ford might export this EV to other markets like Australia or the Middle East, but I'm damn sure it ain't coming to America. The best we can hope for is that Ford learns from their partners in China and starts making EVs like this elsewhere. 